All right, welcome back, guys. Fnusa57 here, once again on my Xbox One, bringing you yet another video. In today's video, I will be showing you how to do the brand new turbine speedrun slash like forced spawn. I don't know if you really want to call it a glitch or coding error. Um, I don't know exactly why it does it. I did not find this originally. Uh, it's all over Reddit and everything, but I just figured that I would showcase it real quick for those of you trying to go ahead and farm cards. We'll talk about whether this actually has any benefit, uh, if you want to do it or not. But I leave that up to you guys. I simply provide the information and what you do with it is up to you. So use at your own risk, but with as many broken things as there are in this game, I don't really think there's much of a problem with it. So, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, there's been several speedruns over the history of Gears, and TC kind of frowns on speedruns, but at the same time, he, there's usually new ones that pop up. So, basically, the speedrun strategy using a somewhat forced spawn used to be, and still is for, Overload. However, there is part of the Operation 7 update, three brand new maps. Now, currently, they're only available under the Horde Tile Maps playlist, which forces you to play on a maximum high difficulty of Inconceivable instead of being able to play in a custom lobby and play them on Master. And we're looking for a specific map. We're looking for the map Turbine. Now, there's three maps in this playlist, so this may be a little bit annoying to do, and you do have to make sure that your team stays together after every time you search and then back out. All right, here we go. We finally got the right map. We got Turbine. Now, like I said, once this event is over, which it was only for two weeks at the start of Op 7, then these maps will be playable in custom games. So right now, all you can do is play the 12 wave frenzy and you can only play it on a maximum of inconceivable difficulty. Now the classes that you use for this really don't matter. Ideally, you need one explosive class and an engineer. Um, ideally mechanic, but you can really use whatever you want. I'm kind of curious what the absolute fastest speed run with this method is. Uh, I would assume probably two tacticians, a demo, uh, maybe a gunner using concussive explosives. Like there's a whole bunch of different combinations that you could do. But once again, I'm simply providing the information and then at the end, I'll discuss whether or not I believe this to be actually worth it. So as most of you guys know, they broke a lot of stuff with the launch of Operation 7. Horde bosses are glitching out. Uh, some people have the Obsidian skins already, and then they lost them. Some people lost all their cards. Uh, some people gained cards. Uh, most of us gained more coins than we probably should have, maybe, question mark. The stats leaderboard is bugged out for PvP, and the stats leaderboard for all PvE content is bugged out for a lot of people. So there's just all sorts of different bugs going on in the game currently, because in my opinion, they changed too much at the one time. But the way that this works, and like I said, it's all over the reddit and forms i've even seen a couple youtube videos on it already so it's not really a big deal to share the information but you need to bring the fabricator to a specific spot now most bugs uh glitches coding errors whatever you want to call it generally refer around forced spawns or blocking a specific spawn point or points so in this particular case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and buy my breaker mace and deposit the rest of my money 
Now, if you get it right, it's a big if, but if you get the placement of the Fabricator right, all of the enemies, including the bosses, for the most part, spawn right on that Fabricator. Now, basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the energy taps, buy the weapons that you need, and then just grab a uh, weapons locker. And that's really all you need is barriers and weapons lockers. And then you pretty much just go to town. Flamethrowers, grenades, breaker maces. I mean, really, at the end of the day, whatever you want to do. Now, if you're like me and you're using that breaker mace, then you're going to have to keep getting some ammo boxes. And you will have to be careful of poppers. Uh, this is just for testing and sheer amusement purposes. Do be careful that you don't break your breaker mace completely, though. If you're using the breaker mace. But basically any class you could think of would work for that particular situation. You double or triple up the barriers, buy what weapons you need, get the classes that need weapon lockers, weapon lockers, and then you just skip as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's the big thing. Just make sure you hit that skip button so that you save yourself the build time or the whole wait time, I should say. And I forgot to pick up the ammo box up here. If you are using a breaker mace like I am, which would really only be viable on the blade master or the protector. Striker maybe, but nobody really plays striker that much. You're definitely going to need to get a couple of the ammo boxes. Or have a locker with a spare mace that you rotate between. And this is basically how you do it. So I'm going to leave all 12 waves in here. It's really kind of ridiculously easy to do. I don't understand exactly how this works, though. Uh, because there's plenty of spawn points on the map. So in theory, the enemies should not be just spawning in this one particular location. There's no specific need to have an energy tap in a specific spot or put fortifications in a specific spot so it's not like the old school gears 4 speed runs where you're actually required to really spread out and think it through as far as who's playing what where this is just basic set it and forget it I have to go get my ammo crate up here. At least until I get a locker. This could be good if you need to level up Jack, though. And of course, if the fabricator gets destroyed, you just go ahead and repair it. Which sometimes there does seem to be a bit of a bug where you can actually repair the fabricator and uh, have it not use money. Of course, you have to be careful if that happens. Because obviously we got poppers, so like right now I just lost my breaker mace. Not sure if Casper was trying to die there or not, but... I suppose you could use this to your advantage for uh, getting the relic weapons if you wanted to. Sadly, I have to buy a new breaker mace now.
Let's try to skip as fast as possible on this, though. I'm gonna save my money. I'm not gonna buy a breaker mace right this second. Just what I needed. We've got company. Only because it's a boss wave. But I will use my ultimate. Of course, you have to be careful if there's poppers, because the blast radius on poppers is pretty darn crazy. Now, as you'll notice, it's a boss wave, but we don't have a boss. And it doesn't really matter if somebody goes in here. Like, you can be standing in here. Enemies still spawn. Sometimes the bosses take a little while to spawn. Sometimes they don't, though. I gotta get that free breaker mace in there, though. There we go. Yeah, I love it when I don't have to buy me a breaker mace. Now, you can get this energy tap that spawns in there, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Come on, give me that freaking... I want that breaker mace. Ah, it's stuck in the energy tap. Oh, well. You do have to be careful, they can do some serious damage. And the weapon lockers actually take a little while to recharge your breaker mace. Now, the fastest way by far, as far as the Breaker Mace is concerned, to refill the ammo is to just grab the ammo box. Like I mentioned, we do want to skip these waves as fast as possible. We got enemies incoming. It doesn't save much, but when you can get that nice 19 second skip, it does add up. I am curious how quickly they will fix this, because there's so many things that are broken in this game, uh, especially with Op 7, that I doubt this is very high on the priority list. I was waiting for an ammo box, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get one right now. The really strange thing is even if the fabricator gets destroyed, this still works. Pretty much same as before. Like, all the waves are ridiculously easy. I'm just leaving the full gameplay here so that you can see. 
I've heard reports that this could be done as fast as 10, uh, sorry, 10 minutes, but I don't think that's exactly accurate. As you can see, the breaker mace does work, but it's not exactly the best bet, especially as the waves go on. So ranged explosive classes are probably the best thing for this. Now, of course, the flock, the flock is the one enemy that does spawn out and continues to fly around the map. So just bear that in mind. Also, with all the barriers, sometimes your smash doesn't really go through all the barriers. So you have to be a little careful about that. Overall, I would say uh, it's not worth it to use a blade master on this. Using this combo, uh, I don't think it's as efficient. More than likely, using multiple tacticians with speed loader would be the most efficient thing that you could do. Or tack and demo combo. Possibly having a pilot. It is nice if you have a pilot, but you definitely have to have a locker for a pilot to have enough drop shots. However, if you have a pilot, then you don't have to worry as much about the enemies uh, shooting because they'll be stunned most of the time. On a plus note, you can pick up the power pretty much a hundred percent of the time while it's a double stack so we only have two waves to go I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of whether you choose to do this or not now so the pros being it is extremely fast probably the fastest method of completing a frenzy outside of maybe the overload frenzy um, and that does require a specific team comp to do that speed run. Uh, it would be very easy to level up a promotional character doing this or farm cards for Jack. Farming cards for promotional classes, of course, would also be viable. But that's basically where the pros for doing this end. Uh, now, obviously, I can't test the exact XP because all of my classes are at level 20 and all of, well, my account level is maxed, re up 50 max levels. So there's quite literally nothing that I can actually even earn XP on currently. With the fact that you cannot do this in a private lobby, so you cannot do this on master difficulty, and the fact that it's really, really, really incredibly boring. 
plus the fact that you have to wait to actually get the map and you might not get the map that you want I would say overall verdict this is not really something that is worthwhile doing I mean to run it once just to see for the shits and giggles factor of hey what's this it's new look at the carnage sure why not it's amusing but from a practical standpoint personally i don't believe that it would be worthwhile considering that a master frenzy with boost only rewards i believe 11,000 roughly 11,000 class xp and four skill cards now because we're playing on incon the amount of xp rewarded is significantly less about 2000 and the amount of skill cards remains the same but when you play on incon you tend to have a far lower chance of getting epic or purple cards for some reason at least that's been my experience with this game i suppose you could use a technique like this in order to farm cards or through a roundabout process if you have max cards you could use this particular technique in order to farm gears coins with that being said though it is much faster to farm gears coins by just simply doing surge speed runs or even master clock speed runs so overall i don't find this to be practically worthwhile at all uh, now maybe you guys think that it is or isn't i would be really curious to know of course the flock can also get out and kind of just go down under the map which is really annoying and you do have to be careful with the mechanics turret when it glitches it lags the lobby out but dealing with the flock is probably what takes the longest amount of time which if you had more explosive beat uh, bleed classes it would be easier or if you had a pilot that could freeze it it would be a lot easier and I just got eaten by a leech that was an absolutely terrible way to go all right and there we go victory so that's how you do it uh we'll take a look at the skill cards there i hope that you enjoyed the video and the information provided it's very easy to do this speed run very easy to do this for spawn let me know if you think you should do it or not do it personally i'm gonna stay away from it because i just don't see the point i would rather do the overload speed run it's more fun requires more skill and you can do it on master so we just did that on inconceivable and unfortunately only obtained a measly four green cards all of which were cards that i had to scrap so let me know what you guys think in the comment section definitely slap that like button and of course subscribe for more content until next time my brothers and sisters i legion stay frosty